Good morning, fellow privateers. <clears throat> Welcome to the week ahead outlook. Uh, we've got a uh, Jewish holiday tomorrow, so I think the, the you know the market's going to be markets open, but um, yeah, I think they'll be celebrating the religious hol religious holiday, and uh, generally the markets are, are fairly quiet. Um, but anyhow, we're, you know, we're, we're looking to get, we've got quite a bit ahead this weekend. We'll take a look at the event risk calendar, um, which I've got up here from Bloomberg. And as you can see, uh, to start things off in Asia, uh, we have China manufacturing and non-manufacturing non PMI data coming out. That'll be important. Um, the one thing that came out just recently over the weekend um, you know there was all this concern over the Bloomberg article that came out on Friday and they hammered stocks I think they sold off about 20 handles um, you know one of the headlines was the US Treasury it was planning on blocking future Chinese or Chinese listings and delisting some of the Chinese companies that are currently listed in the US. Um, you know, we heard, we read that headline and it, to me, it just seemed like it was a bunch of nonsense, but the algos reacted. Things so, risk sold off pretty aggressively. Then you had a little bit of a bounce off the lows late in the day. Um, but over the weekend, uh, this Bloomberg headline came out and said that the US Treasury says there's no plans to block Chinese listings at this time. So the at this time is interesting. Um, but, you know, it concerns me that Bloomberg put this article out during trading hours. And immediately people were saying that this was misinterpreted. Um, you know, so they had the weekend to clarify and uh you know s p's got down to this the really key level it wasn't down there for long uh, we will look at that chart in a minute um that was pretty much the only news out over the weekend you know um, and risk is opening firmer here with the s p's and nasdaq up about a half percent um you know as far as data goes you know th this week we we do have uh uk gdp the final number so that shouldn't really uh, be much different than the previous. Um, and then tomorrow in, uh, in Asia, we've got the RBA and I believe it's a 78% chance of them cutting rates. So that seems to be in the price. It's not, you know, not very, uh, um, you know, they, obviously the only way that that would really move is if they did not cut rates and I'm trying to find, oh, here they are. Um, you know, if they were not to cut rates, then that would be a huge shocker. Um, we have Canadian GDP this week. We've got a load of Fed speakers. We've got ISM out of the U.S. Um, let's take a look here. The United States, we've got ISM coming out on Tuesday, uh, New York time. And ADP on Wednesday. And then, of course, we... Uh, the non-manufacturing ISM, and then we have the jobs numbers. And I was reading somewhere that the historically the September jobs numbers have been weak in the U.S. Um, the change in NFP is expected 145 versus prior 130. Um, so you know, and the unemployment rates will stay the same. Um, you yeah, know, but that's not till Friday. So we uh, we do have some event risk that will that will be important leading up to that um, <clears throat> we hop over the charts take a look uh, we'll talk about the Australian dollar um, you know here is Friday's bar to me the market is short we had this nice little run up and then it sold off 
it's kind of been consolidating. You know, it's closed here, it's closed here, and it's closed here. And to me, I'm thinking that uh, a lot of the dovishness and the and the neg negative negativity surrounding you know global growth and you know, Australian dollar is probably close to being in the price. Um, you know, whereas we do think they're going to cut like the rest of the market. I'm not sure you're going to get much of a reaction, you know, when it's close to 80% chance of cutting. Um, I don't, I don't think unless they come across extremely dovish sounding, I don't see this going, um, much lower and the pain is to the top side in Aussie dollar, um, Kiwi, the positioning, um, that we talked about a couple of weeks ago, you know, it, it's, it, it's still extreme, the short positioning. Um, it has come off a little bit, you know, bounced a little bit off those lows that we saw. But, um, you know, then we had this another big down bar on Wednesday and um, kind of a messy Thursday, Friday looking. But again, you know, this is another one where the risk seems kind of to the top side. And the, the, the big break trade here is above these wick highs, but that's way above 64, 40, 50. Um, Euro not doing much of anything as we'll pull the weekly charts up here. Um, we did get a new low weekly close. Um, it was one of the, uh, I believe it was one of the weaker pairs. I was down about three quarters of a percent on the week. Um, the leader on um, the downside for the currencies was Great British Pound. And you can see here in the weekly. Um, I don't know what this thing is. Let's get rid of it. You can see here we had kind of this doji ish week two weeks ago, and then we went pretty much straight down, closed on the lows. So, you know, maybe this has another look at this uh, 119 handle. Um, Kiwi was the strongest versus the dollar this week. Um, and I think that's just positioning because it's not, nothing really fundamental came out of that. Uh, oil had a really crappy week. We've completely filled in that entire gap and, you know, all that, um, all the drone, the drone weekend um, chaos a couple weeks back. So Oil struggled. It was down about three, almost four percent on the week. Uh, the S and P's um, we closed here at 61.20, uh, 29.61. However, it's up about a half percent here on the open. It's not reflected in this chart. Um, the, the S and P's were down about one percent, and then uh, gold struggled. Gold got hammered the other day on nothing at all. I have no idea. There was no news, no nothing out. You can see here, this was back on, uh, it was Wednesday, just had it wasn't a, it was a, you know, bearish and golfing. We didn't make a new high on Wednesday, but just it tanked and it really hasn't recovered. So, you know, for us, we like selling it below 1480. Um, and we'll, we'll be watching that line uh, very closely. Uh, let's take a look at 10 year yields. Go to the weekly. You know, we had the big spike that was just a positioning cleanse a few weeks ago, and then it's, it's, it's kind of backing and filling and retracing some of this, uh, of that August sell off in, uh, in yields. So, um, how about dollar yen, dollar yen, dollar yen's not really reacting to this, uh, to this risk on rally here early in Asia. It's actually down on the day. And it's funny because the Australian dollar as well, so Aussie yen is not reacting. Meanwhile, you got the S&Ps and NASDAQ <laughs> uh, kind of flying on the open. There was an Aussie yen daily. A lot of indecision down in here. Then we had that up bar, but came back off, closed, you know, closed kind of mid-range. Um, but, you know, here this little red bar is the is the uh, today's bar. So you can see um, well, that was, yeah, I mean, we're still, we're just, we're just in the, I'm filming this at the uh, 
40 minutes into the um, CME open. So some of these charts will not be updating. Um, Dollar Canada here is another one that um, we played this break on Friday and let's go to the four hour. Um, we played this break here of 132.30 and it was looking really quite sexy. Um, it went down about 20 pips, 15, 20 pips. And then the headline from Bloomberg came out and risk got hit really hard. And, you know, Canadian dollar is, was part of that, uh, when they sold Canada and Kiwi and Australian dollar and, you know, they bought the yen. And so that, that got, that got caught up in, in, in that mess, but then you can see how it, um, you know, here's the hourly, hourly. so it rallied, it rallied all the way back up. So it went basically from 132.15, so it was a nice clean break. Then we got stopped out on the way back up, went all the way up to 65.70, and then it kind of started trading lower. Now it looks like it's, uh, you know, it looks like it's uh, under a little bit of pressure here early, um, early Asia. Um you know, that's about it. There, there's not a not a ton out there to talk about on the charts. Um, you'll hear from us on the European Open. You will, um, you know, we'll update you with some of the, you know, the important events that are coming up um, throughout the week. Uh, keep in mind, October 10th and 11th is the high-level meetings with China. Um, you know, so I think it's going to be kind of a rangy, unless Trump decides to upset the apple cart, It'll be kind of a rangy week. NFP is probably pretty important. Um, we want to see if the U.S. is indeed slowing. You know, we're seeing the slowdown in China and the slowdown in Germany and the rest of Europe. And, uh, you know, I think people are waiting for more evidence that this is a big global slowdown in the making. And we need uh, we need to see things like higher unemployment rate, um, you know, weaker jobs numbers. Uh, ISM is going to be important this week in the U.S. See if that's bottomed yet. Um, so stay tuned. We will keep you up throughout the week. And good luck trading. And uh, we'll speak to you on the open. Cheers. Bye.